What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Rule of Two. We got a fun podcast here for you guys today. So we're gonna talk about a bunch of different things and uh, just see where the conversation goes. What up, Mark? What's going on, man? What, what up, man? Happy Monday. Happy Monday to the chat. You know, we um, it's um, I want to give uh, a little bit of a somber note, but I want to give a special shout out to my brother, John Schnepp, um, who we celebrated uh, the passing of uh, of John Schnepp over the weekend. And and today, July 20th, uh, we lost um, the great Chester Bennington uh, of Lincoln Park. So I just want to give a nice little heartfelt shout out to them. You know, F's all the way. Yeah. And Chester was your boy, too. So Yeah, man. Chester yeah. was my boy. And, you know, Joe Hahn was on the podcast. And, you know, Lincoln Park is a friend of, uh, of the podcast and a friend of ours. And, and you know, God bless to, to all those people. So, you know, um, even though we keep on living, we got to remember the legacy of these great people. So I just wanted to give a little bit of... Uh, of a shout out there to them and um, a shout out to the whole chat. See how everybody's doing. What up, chat? What's going on? So to start things off, uh, we have yeah, just not really much to talk about. Next week, we're going to have um, potentially crossing our fingers. Uh, it's already confirmed. We're just waiting for a double confirmation on a big guest coming to rule of two. So um, make sure you leave your your uh, W's in the chat. Send some good vibes. Um, today's news and we're going to talk about much more, uh, is that John Boyega, a lot of people are blowing this out of proportion, but I'd like to give my points on it and my, my thoughts on it as well as Mark's. Um, in his recent Instagram post, he went and posted that he's back on set and he's working again, which is awesome. And someone went to say, a comment that we all wanted from the sequels, Force Finn in action with green lightsaber dressed in black is all I want from the next Star Wars film, where John replied and says, lol, no thank you, I've moved on, heart. To which someone then went on to say, really just got those Disney bucks and dipped, laughing, crying face. And John replies again, nope, not into playing one role for too long. I have more to offer than that. That's all. So this is very, very true in my opinion, and I believe Mark believes you know the same thing, is that, Mar- uh, is that John was, he's a very talented actor, but the character of Finn was just very underutilized, and it was just a bad character, a badly written character. So I would have loved to have seen, you know, a, a rogue stormtrooper that comes out of uh, uh, being a slave uh, for the Empire and then goes into being a Jedi and being like the main character and just kicking ass everywhere. I think that would have been really sweet. But of course, we didn't get that. And um, whatever John means by his comment, which I don't want to read too into, um, obviously, he he deserves much more uh, as an actor, I believe. So, uh, Mark, what do you think about it? Look, I um I've been preaching uh, that John Boyega is the most uh, underutilized talent in Star Wars sequels for years, and I think everybody knows how I feel about that. Um, there's um there's a lot that could have happened with Finn, and we talked about it on the last podcast. I mean, uh, you know, the Finn thing is a bait and switch. You know, a lot of us hardcore Star Wars folks when uh, The Force Awakens was first starting to get talked about, things were starting to leak about it, especially after that first trailer, we were all pretty convinced and I think excited about the idea of John Boyega being the lead um, yeah. in the in the sequels. Um, and I think Real it would have been freaking amazing. Clickbaited hard. We got clickbaited hard on that one. Um, and then we got the bait and switch and he was just this secondary character and then we got bait and switched every single episode it seemed like his role was diminished in every single yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so look, we, we've talked about it to death, so it's no surprise that he's stepping away from it. But I also think that he said something interesting in that, in that article that I was reading, something about that he's, that he's not opposed to maybe the idea of revisiting the character many years down the line, uh, if necessary, but that he feels like he's been playing him too much now. So maybe having like a 10 year gap, okay, you know, cool. we might see him come back in 10 years yeah, or something that. like that. Um, but come As back like a to Jedi what? master. Well, maybe he's going to be a Jedi master. Maybe he's going to be a Jedi Knight because we know we left him off with, uh, he's like having all these force abilities now. So 
when we pick up, he could be, I don't know, 10 years yeah. later and he went on this journey and then they're going to go in and fill that story of him in the middle with like spinoffs and stuff. Who knows? Yeah. If nobody's seen, um, it, it, it's a movie by, um, by James uh, Cameron's uh, ex-wife or I think she's his, uh, his ex-wife. Um, and, um, the movie's called Detroit. Um, and that's the same lady who directed, um, um, Zero Dark Thirty and The Hurt Locker and um, and uh, Point Break. Oh, God, I'm spacing on her name right now. Um, but um, she did a movie called Detroit. It was her last movie. The movie's incredible. Yeah. Um, and John Boyega plays uh, the security guard, um, and he does. He has an exceptional, exceptional role in it. I highly, highly recommend it. Detroit is the movie. Uh, John Boyega is in it, amongst a bunch of other great actors too. But really, really, really solid movie. Well, I'll check it out. I just watched uh, RoboCop the other night for the first time, the new one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the reboot, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't get through it. I couldn't get through it. Okay, it was it was kind of cool. I liked it. It was sweet. Catherine the whole... Bigelow. That's that's, that's her, her name. name. Catherine, the Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. Why I bring it up is because in that scene, I don't know if they got inspiration from Vader or not, but in that scene uh, where he's in the suit, he's getting a blood transfusion and then he's getting proteins, carbs, and fats put into him through tubes, which is exactly how fa Vader was fed. Damn. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know a lot of the stuff that went on with Vader inside the suit, which was pretty sick, is that like he had to be scrubbed, like actually gross. He had to be scrubbed from with his necrotic flesh just like peeling off his body. Uh, he had like these like spikes that were in his helmet and they would go intertwine with his whole nervous system and his body and his suit and yeah. it was pretty sick. So that's something I'd love to see that. in the in the show. And uh, today also I like I'm not sure I, I, I saw you post it, but um, uh, you and McGregor's daughter posted a picture of him <laughs> yeah. cook, cooking shrimp uh, on, on the, the Bobby, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Bobby. He's got the, and, uh, the beard, man. He looked like he looked pretty Obi Wan. He looked pretty Obi Wan. Let me get the picture up. Here, check it out, guys. It's kind of fuzzy. There it is. Yeah. You and McGregor. You and McGregor is one of the good you guys, man. Like he's. Uh, I can't wait to see him back in that role. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. I just hope they do it right. Yeah. Um, so what else is going on in Star Wars land? There isn't much right now, man. At all. Mr. Memes Finn would have made a badass Jedi. Definitely, dude. Dude, where you been on the gaming channel? I haven't seen you in forever. So how about that Rebel sequel series, gentlemen? Right. So we haven't really gotten any word on that. Just rumors and such. Um, if you want a director on Star Wars, who would it be? I don't know. What if you could pick? Hey, um, so, my my sort of directing dream for Star Wars. I mean, look, obviously, there's a bunch of 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 qualified people out there that I think would do a great job with it. But right. if if I had to pick somebody to direct a new Star Wars movie, um, I would pick Chad Stileski. Who's that? Now, if you're not familiar with Chad Stileski, Chad Stileski is the director of the John Wick movies. Oh, okay. And he did. He just did John Wick three, and uh, he also worked on Captain America: Civil War. He was um, he was the uh, stunt coordinator and the uh, second unit director on that. Yeah. And um, he also just recently did that movie as executive producer that's on Netflix with Chris... Uh, um, Chris Hemsworth? Hemsworth. In the, uh, yeah, in the Russo... Extraction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, see, so he also kind of put that together. So there's Over 99 about... million hits on that movie on Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah. So with his kind of taste for action... And his understanding of sort of poetic narrative structure, I think Chad Stileski would be an incredible choice for Star Wars. Um, because, like, to me, 
one look another slam on the sequels and I'll just outright say it is that I can't think of one action scene that I really enjoyed like you know like the the fight between Kylo and Rey at the end of Force Awakens I think has some potential to be a great action sequence with the trees and the snow yeah, and it's cool. you know there was some cool cool moments right. there but you but it still felt like amateurs fighting each other yeah it, you know, it felt it like little kids which it was it was the, it was the children of Skywalker I, I guess right right so where if you look at John Wick 3 I mean I remember watching John Wick 3 in the movie theater mm. And it's one of the few movies I've seen in years where I'm like <laughs> clapping in the middle of the movie, yeah, right? yeah. like just like screaming. And and it wasn't just me; the whole theater yeah. is like screaming. Um, so I think Chad Stileski to answer that question, Chad Stileski would be the guy that I would choose to do a Star Wars movie. Cool. Okay. What about Christopher Nolan? I think Christopher Nolan. You know, we talked a little bit about this last podcast too. I think Christopher Nolan is a little too dark stylized okay. i think he's got too much of his own style and it wouldn't be star wars it would be christopher nolan's star wars you know it, it like it almost would be like in those like you know when you get those vader helmets and you give it to like 50 artists and the artists do their own like drawing on top of the helmet you know like yeah. it'd be that kind of thing as opposed to where i think Stileski. Uh, having worked on Marvel before, so he understands the big brands. Yeah. Um, creating a franchise like John Wick, which is a bona fide film franchise, I think he's got all the the sort of the the makings of understanding how to evolve uh, the uh, the Star Wars franchise, as opposed to try to usurp it and make it his own thing. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Uh, Wesley says, have you ever, have you followed word on the Lucas cut or meeting at Skywalker Ranch on the third? I saw the, uh, the Dr. Toboggan, or whatever his name is, Dr. Doomcock, uh, video on Dr. it. Dr. Toboggan? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. I, Toboggan? I saw the Dr. Toboggan thing on it. it it's like, look, um, this dude... Is obviously got a vibe going. Okay, he's got style. He's killing it, dude. Yeah, he yeah, is he's killing, killing it. it right now. Um, but I question his sources a little bit, only because I'm in the source business, and I know how these sources work, and it sounds a little bit too, like my source heard from another source that he was in the movie theater watching the movie and. And whatever. Right. That being said, I do believe him that there was a scene in the movie with Hayden Christensen in the flesh as a force ghost that they took out. I do believe that. I do believe that. You know, because he said that he bottom line, he says two things. He says that there was a scene where uh, after Ray kills uh, Chewie that, um, you know, she's like, I can't keep going with this. And then Anakin shows up and says, you know, life is tough. Things are hard. We'll get better. And he's actually consoling her. Um, and that would have been a cool moment. And I can, I can believe that something like that was in it. And I think the other big scene that he talked about, uh, ah, God, I forget the other one. Um, I haven't watched his latest video. Oh, I, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I haven't really seen any of his videos in full. I've seen portions. And they're really entertaining. I really, really, I don't know yeah, why, yeah. but they're just very entertaining. Right. So yeah, even yeah, even if even if it's bullshit, yeah. Like, I mean, if we want to talk about sources. Like, you're the source guy. If we want to talk about sources, I get tons of emails and and tweets and everything about my source this, my source that. Uh, you know, like mention me on your channel. It's like I, I'm pretty sure 90% of it's bullshit. But uh, right, I don't know who this guy's sources are. But I mean, if you're saying like some of them sound legit, then. Okay. Some of them sound a little bit legit. And look, he's got a track record. I think he leaked some stuff once that was accurate, right. you know, so he, he, he's got he's got a little credibility. The other scene that he talked about What if he's a guy during... himself at Lucasfilm or Disney? What if he's like a prime shareholder and he like gets invited to those big I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. I think he's just a YouTuber who's made a couple of hit videos. 
some people just like they reach out to you have reached out to him. He's maybe done a little bit of digging and gotten some stuff. Um, now the, the other scene that he talked about, which I also believe. So the two scenes that he talked about, I actually believe are real. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Anakin showing up to Ray. And the other scene that he talked about was, um, during that, uh, during that moment where, we lost um, we lost Kylo your, your cam. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. You what's lost wrong. the cam. You're a voice. You're quite gone. Are you yeah, still with me? Hear, we can hear you, but I, I can't. Mean, yeah, I can't see you. I can. I can see you. Everything see is you fine. On Skype, I'm buying. But I can't see you in in OBS. You're a blank screen, Mark. Do you want to try to fix it, or? It it's like weird. It's on your it, end, it, mate. It's. We're probably getting hacked right now as we speak <laughs> that's super weird buddy that's super strange okay I'll just show my screen I'll be fine all right go for it yeah, just just, just it. It bring it OBS, back on yeah. OBS. Uh, go for it. This is the best I can do right now. So, if you sit up a little bit, sit up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We'll roll with that. We'll roll with that. Okay, improvise. All right, cool. So anyway, the second scene is in that flashback, or or not that flashback, but that moment where Kylo has that uh, mm -hmm. scene with Harrison Ford. Um, supposedly. Leia and Mark mm -hmm. Hamill were also there. Um, so Kylo kind of talks to okay. all three of them at the same time. Um, so I kind of believe that that was true also, you know? Now, the things that I believe less is that 40% of the film was different than we finally got at the end. Um, I don't believe it's that much different. Um, and that Lucas... There was like a Lucas cut. Like, what the hell does that mean? You know, like Lucas yeah. is not involved. Yeah. He's not make. He, he's not spending six months doing his own cut. You know, or else Ooh, we, we would get definitely his story. know about None it. None of this is his story. And you're gonna tell me that they trashed his yeah. his treatment and his scripts for it, and then he's gonna go in on the third film, which is a completely disillusioned from anything. Even if it was the first one, it would be like, okay, maybe a little bit believable. But this is like three stories off. And with the cluster that was came with the last Jedi, like sp spun it in some different direction. There's no way this is his cut. Like, what do you, his cut of his best version of what they made? Is that what he means? Yeah, maybe like his his. Uh, I I, know, I have no idea what the hell they mean. But look, one thing I do know is that Doomcock, <laughs> if that is even his name, I, I might be name. saying his name wrong. But the guy. The guy's a cool YouTuber, man. You know, he's got a he's got something going yeah, on. Man. So more power to you, keep bro. Keep going, keep killing it. Um, maybe I'll yeah. start wearing a mask and change my voice. And <laughs> um, Peter Jackson should be director. They should make a mall movie. If you guys could retcon the sequel trilogy, would you? Yes. Server so, series. Thank you for the video on the Last Jedi. I love the sequels. And I totally understand your points, and thank you for being so positive about them. Oh, thanks, Josh. I'm glad you like the sequels, man. Have you followed word on... Right, we just read that one. The Force will be with you always. Thank you, dude. Uh, I prefer the original and prequel trilogy lightsaber than the sequel trilogy for sure. The original trilogy lightsaber fights were poetic to me. They were, but there was only... You know, n it wasn't George's full vision because it was so limited. So I feel like the prequels were really his full vision. The full power. Yeah, right. I think his emergence back... I think his emergence back now indicates he's been around. My son's first birthday is this Friday. Would you wish Thorin Aurelius a happy birthday? That's a cool name. Thorin Aurelius. A happy birthday, Thorin. Have a great first birthday, man. Mark, what's your channel? Um, Collider. So I have a bunch of different channels. Collider Games, Collider. Um, right. Those are the two main ones. And the website is the main one. Collider. Yeah. 
Collider.com. Execute yeah, order. Cut baby. out his camera. <laughs> You're good. Okay. Master Mark, there are none yeah. of you. What are we going to <laughs> Shout out to all the mods for doing a great job with chat. Oh, yeah. I changed the chat to... Uh... To join member only because people are just being weird. Um, yeah, what's what's going on? There's a, some weird vibe out there in the in the ether, man. It's all it's all just uh, rock and roll, dude. Whatever, man. I'm like the most <laughs> laid back, chill dude, and people. It, it's Star Wars. We're talking about Star Wars, man. It's supposed to be fun, and and you know, it's supposed yeah. to be it's supposed to be fun. I think that that's the uh, yeah, oh, what, members yeah. only mode is off. Let's see now. Let's see what happens. What are you, what are you eating? <laughs> nice. Almonds. I'm not sponsored, but damn, these are good. <laughs> Sorry about that. What? Man, you know what I've been thinking what? about um, over the weekend? The Rogue Squadron Why? game. Because I'm getting increasingly excited about okay. the VR. I used to play the crap it. out of that game. When it was LucasArts. The crap out of it. Like, crazy. Squadrons? Is that what the game mm. is called? Rogue Squadron. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, supposedly there's a VR uh, version of it that's right. supposed to happen at launch. Uh, for the Oculus Rift and the ACC Vive and the full game in VR. And um, I'm pretty pumped about that. You know? Like, mm -hmm. if they do a good job with the VR aspect of it, um, it could be a lot of fun. I mean, look, it's also could be very like uh, motion sickness inducing because mm -hmm. I've played other flight sims and right. it could get a little bit intense. Um, but um, I'm pretty I'm pretty pumped about the idea of a triple A Star Wars game in VR that's longer than Vader Immortal because look, Vader Immortal is incredible. I absolutely love Vader Immortal. But Vader Immortal is like a comic book. It's like a right. it's like a tiny little comic book, you know? It's awesome. It was sick. And if you guys haven't played Vader Immortal, go play it. And the best part about Vader Immortal is actually the lightsaber dojo. Um, graduating to mastering the lightsaber dojo is one of the most difficult things I've ever done in gaming. Have you ever have you ever played? Yeah, the, absolutely. The, I didn't master the dojo. Them, yeah, I played them. They're really fun. Yeah, they're really fun. So it's like, that's a great game, but it's still a small game. You know, like Rogue Squadron is going to be a AAA console title, you know, full price, even though I heard it's only going to be like 40 bucks or something. Um, but I'm looking forward to the idea of hopping inside an X-Wing or a TIE Bomber, inside VR, checking out all the different panels, flying the ship. You it know, cool. it could be I really it's cool. It's going to be fun for sure. Uh, 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 Star Wars TV, would you be able to play the Episode 3 movies tie-in game? It has an interesting take on the story. Yeah, it's just um, being able to get PlayStation on my PC is uh, tough. Loving the hats. I've been repping it on my stream. Oh, what up, Desire? Thanks, man. Gonna cop some more apparel for sure. Thank you, buddy. Uh, first, where can I buy hilt-only lightsabers and please cover Bane Trilogy like Vader Comics? Yeah, so I am covering the Bane Trilogy. I've just been kind of all over the place with my videos lately. Covering Shatterpoint and Bane Trilogy and then going to the... I've been covering a lot of the bonus content for the DVDs. So, so I read the first book in the Bane yeah. Trilogy just recently. So, if people... Like, after you read it, have one. you already read it? Okay, so I... So, the first one's the only one that I've really read... So if you want to uh, do a little review on that at some point, I'm down. I I uh, I really it's liked cool. the first book. I thought it was really good. Mark, did you think? Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, do you think if Kylo didn't die in Episode Nine, the movie would have been better? Um. Yes. What more? Yes, I I um, I think Kylo Ren is um they're, they're saying my thing is super delayed maybe just take my video off and just picture put of a you? picture of a, just put a picture of a, just put a picture of anakin or something um yeah you can just leave it black or throw up a, another thing or whatever but anyway um i think kylo ren was the 
coolest part about the sequels um, that they actually made work. Um, and, um, you know, I, I always was bummed that, I mean, like, even though I get it, Vader dies at the end mm -hmm. of the first trilogy. So you never got to see Vader yeah. sort of live out his life. Yeah. Or no, no. Or live out his life as a good person right. or try to become a better person. You know, I love the idea of I'm going to finish what you started actually meaning the idea that that Kylo takes on the Jedi Academy and builds out the Academy and starts to train mm -hmm. the new generation of Jedi um, in this kind of, you know, way where he's already seen the dark, he's already fallen to the dark, he's already committed atrocities, but that he's able to sort of bounce out of that and teach a new generation of Jedi with that experience of, of having right. sort of both sides of the coin. I think it could have been fun. So my personal opinion, yes, I think it would have been better. Yeah, it would have been way cooler. Off, also, I think he was the coolest character in the show. But yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I want to get your face back in here. So I'm going to, I don't care if it's delayed. It just looks better. At least you're alive, you know. You can't yeah, get you know, OBS. I've been checking Check on OBS. OBS You're there, but it shows up as blank for some reason. I don't know why. Do you want me to call back? Um, Maybe try calling back real quick? Sure. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, I'll try that. All right, chat, hit F for me if I never come back. <laughs> There we go. That works. Yo. You have returned. Back. Yeah, you're, you're good. You good. Yeah, sweet. Easy. Ah, you're gone again. Mm. Mm, I am pretty. So, obviously, so now you have a clue. Uh, F, yeah, they're giving me the F. It's over. Oh, there it is. I'm back for a second. Yeah, see? And then... Adios, amigos. Would you ever want to see story in film or TV show as a clone trooper journey to the day of the the Clone Wars, to the day of the rise of an empire, just like Battlefront 2 Classic game? Yeah, absolutely. I think we need more shows just about the clones, which we're getting the Bad Batch, so that's pretty dope. Oh, oh did you play um, Did you play uh, 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 Republic? Uh, um, yeah. yeah, Republic Commando. Yeah. How was it? It's good. It's fun. I've never played it. Did, did, did you play it for a while? Did you get far? Or, like, what's the game played like? played for a couple hours. Um, what the hell just happened here now? Does it feel, like, super dated in terms of the uh, gameplay mechanics? Yeah, it kind of feels like Doom. So, like, very, like, dated. I huh? like, yeah. everything is, like, very, like, blocky like oh, that. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's It feels like Doom, literally. It's so funny, man, because after playing um, COD so much during the pandemic, um, and like, for 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 shits and giggles, I went back to Counter Strike. I just loaded it up because mm -hmm. because uh, I, I, I mean I hadn't played Counter Strike in years, but like I remember thinking Counter Strike was so good, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I went back to play it for like ten minutes, and I was like, damn, this feels like dated as hell. It's, it feels dated as hell. Yeah. You know, and then I even tried to check out Battlefield 3, which was my favorite, you know, FPS I probably ever played, because um, I remember how sophisticated it felt, and that felt dated as hell, you know? So, like, FPS has a huge bar on it right now with uh, COD. COD has elevated the bar so high on FPS that I even think... Activision will have trouble with the follow-up. Like, you know how they usually go Modern Warfare, Black Ops, and they go back and forth? Yeah. Like, I don't think they'll be able to go Black Ops because Black Ops, even if it's brand new, might feel dated. But they're supposed to, right? Compared... They're supposed to go to Black Ops, like Vietnam or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're supposed to go yeah. Black Ops yeah. um, after this. And, like, I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, because it's a different studio working on it. So, like... 
because like there's something about this new Call of Duty game that they just nailed it. You know, like they absolutely nailed it. Um, like even that other uh, FPS that you played, was it called the Arma or whatever? Arma Three, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a flip book. It feels like you're like flipping. It doesn't like feel as good as. Yeah, it doesn't uh, feel like a, it doesn't feel like a new game. No. You know, so, so. Well, I mean, it's from 2013 or whatever, so it makes sense. Oh right, so it's already old. It's already yeah. old. What when, when did uh, Republic Commando came out like in two six or something? Two thousand six, two thousand five. It's old something as hell, like right? That. Yeah, it's very old. It came out around the time of the uh, of Revenge of the Sith, right? Let me see here. Chat. When did it come out? Two thousand five, yeah, February twenty eighth. But it's still fun. Like that's the thing. Like it's still like the story is still cool. You're following the clones and you're just ripping shit out. It's 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 fun, man. What era do you want the next Star Wars trilogy to be? Old Republic. Um, half blind. Lol. Thanks. For just reaching. Just half blind. Lol. Thanks for just reading. Just the top. And yes, looking for a lightsaber hilt. Only PS best channel on YouTube. Thank you, dude. Oh, only lightsaber hilt? Oh, I would say master replicas. But they're out, they, they, they no longer exist. And um, they're very expensive. But I would definitely go with those. You're not going to find one better. Started reading the new Thrawn trilogy books. I love them. Would be a cool miniseries about them. Love the character. Yeah, I think we're going to see Thrawn in the, the follow-up to the... Um, the Rebel show. Would you ever want to see a story or film on TV about how a clone trooper journey? Yes, I do. What more do I get with the Emperor sub? Nothing. I'm busy enough as it is. No, you get something. I just, I don't know. <laughs> Theory. If Obi-Wan series is eight years after Sith, that means it takes place three years after Jedi Fallen Order. That's true. All right, so look, I got to say something because the chat keeps asking about this. So, uh, on my Skype, you have my uh, a name up there, and they all think that that's your name. Yeah, it's my name. It's <laughs> so you know, call him Jack. Yeah, it's my name. <laughs> yeah. Or or as I call him, Jackass. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Theory: If Obi Wan series, okay, uh, hey, Star Wars, love your work. Question: Do you think Revan was the chosen one of his time? Hmm. I don't know. Not really. Yeah, I think the chosen one is like a a kind of a prophecy that was almost birthed out of necessity for there being such a um, this kind of struggle, right? It's like it's almost like a prophecy that is needed to happen when something goes wrong for so long or something. Yeah. Like like I think in those older times, the Sith. And the Jedi had a different relationship. Yeah. You know, being a Sith didn't automatically mean you were evil. It just meant you were in a different sect. You right. Know? I think the Sith are quite misunderstood, but I also think they're assholes at the same time. Um, what's up, Theory and Mark? Do you think that Alden Ehrenreich, Young Solo, comments on coming back into the Star Wars universe will amount in Solo 2? Are there talks of him coming back? I don't know, but I would like to see Solo 2 because I want to see Darth Maul on Dathomir. What do right. you think? Um, I don't think we're ever getting solo too. It bombed too much. It bombed too much. Okay. What's your? F Even though I, I actually think it would be cool. It only bombed because of Last Jedi, because people were so pissed. Right. That's, I, I really think that's the only reason. Yeah. Hey guys, love the channel. How much better do you think The Rise of Skywalker would have been if Anakin showed up to redeem Kylo instead of Han Solo? Do you believe that should have happened? I think Han Solo showing up was very poetic and it was very nice, but they should have definitely fit Anakin in there and for him to come back and um, kill Sidious once and for all, I think would have been the right way to do that. But what do you think, Mark? Um... I don't know. Next question. Yeah. Who would win in a fight, Anakin from Revenge of the Sith or Rey in the Rise of Skywalker? Oh, come, come on, on, Anakin. Dude. You asked that question? I just want to say thanks for making but thanks for the five bucks, Carlos. 
I just want to say thanks for making What If Younglings Killed Anakin. I've been struggling with depression, but I swear I laughed for 10 minutes straight after watching <laughs> it, and it cheered me up. Oh, I'm glad, dude. Glad you laughed, man. Did you release the new animation? No, it's all, it's almost saw? done. It is being perfected. It's taken like two months, but it's being perfected. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to love it. It cracked wow. me up. I think it's your best Join one. Join members will love it. Join members. You guys are going to love it. It's. Yeah. I think it's the best one. It really it really got me. I really liked yeah. it. I thought it was a really nice Thank one. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I like it yeah. too. Um, it, you got to do one that has Hux in it. So I can do the <laughs> voice! <laughs> yeah, well, you, you you'll see in season one, two. I can't, I can't reveal it. what's going to happen in season two, but... Uh, this one sets it up right. really well, and, and yeah, we'll definitely see. Right, but if Hux, if Hux is a character, you're bro, Hux. Okay, Hux. yeah, you got it. I want oh, a Revan please. movie. Yeah, me too, with Keanu. Hey, Theory Mark and everyone else, just wanted to pop in and say hello to everyone. Thanks, Harrison. Appreciate that, man. Hello, everyone. Say hello to Harrison. Kale, thanks for the five bucks, dude. Well, guys, uh, if you had to choose a lightsaber hilt type and fighting style, what would it be? Also, do you think that you can make a lightsaber fighting video? Uh, yeah, uh, so I ordered a Vader's Vault lightsaber, and I'm really excited for it, but it's going to take like six months to come. So um, once it does, I'll be making a lot of good videos with that thing because I decked it out like crazy. But um, yeah, definitely. I'm dying to do like, so I'm working on a few things, and if they come together, one of the things that I want to do is a lightsaber. I, I want to make lightsaber fighting videos that are completely gratuitous, have no story, and it's just lightsaber yeah, fights. Cool. Um, <laughs> to me, like I love lightsaber fights, um, and um, I'd love to do one of those. I'd love to maybe you know do like an instructional video of how to learn certain lightsaber stances, like you know Vapad and or Vapad or however you say it, and um, and like all the different stances and actually teach what those stances are about. Like the difference between the way that Vader uh, or Anakin fights, you know, to Obi Wan, yeah. to like, you know, um, Asajj, Ventress, or it's you know, a cool whatever. It's actually man. I wouldn't mind to hire like a, a professional um, swordsman who knows all of those, and uh, that'd be cool. Maybe I could learn it myself yeah. and then make yeah. Because I made um, videos about each form, not each form. I made a video on on the first. No, yeah, no, all forms. I've, been, I've done a video on all forms, and it's really interesting. So to answer your question, yeah. I would use probably Qui-Gon's hilt. Um, it's not my favorite hilt, but I'd use Qui-Gon's hilt because it's the most uh, realistic for fighting, I guess. Um, and I'd probably use Form 5 Demso, which was Anakin's form. Um, you're much more offensive, and I like that. But Yeah, I'd probably use Vader's hilt. That's my favorite hilt. Um, when I play Skyrim VR, I use Vader's hilt. Um, in Star Wars Galaxies, I have a hilt that looks very much like Vader's also. Um, and I'd probably use whatever fighting style Anakin uses. I'm not sure what, you know, which one it is, but I, I'd probably oh, use God, that one too. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you something that I'm going to be doing on the channel is something totally new. I'm going to be making my own short little movies, so my own little... Um, shorts so just like i do with the animations but i'm going to do it with live action so i'm just like just me filming stuff myself with maybe a couple people and then i'll send it into my vfx team and uh and we'll be making some some cool stuff just some funny little things here or there but some little skits so i think that'll be fun nice. yeah um because i used to do that stuff when i was a kid it would make like live action lego stuff or just stupid little trailers um you guys should get Ray Park on the channel. Any hints on who the next guest is? I can't give you a hint, but yeah, we should definitely get Ray Park. He would be cool. Um, I'd love to get him on. What if Jar Jar was a Sith associate? <laughs> episode Episode 1, he goes with Qui-Gon and Kenobi and meets, the, and meets with Palp to help prove that they survived to show loyalty. Then Episode 2, when Padme leaves her, gives Palp more power, maybe on purpose. Yeah, there was a theory that Jar Jar was a Sith Lord, but it never happened. He was actually originally supposed to be evil. Supposedly. Really? Yeah, supposedly. He was supposed to, to work with with the Senate or something, like, or with the Sith. I forgot now. I just wanted to see y'all re reaction about me asking y'all who would win in a fight between Anakin vs. Ray. Anakin is my favorite. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, money well spent then. Reaction, right. Cool. Okay, sweet. What percentage of the novels have you both read? Um, 
I haven't read that many. I, I've, I've read. Do you know uh, how many novels Thrawn. there are out there, Eric? There's like a billion. I read the three Thrawn uh, 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 trilogies, uh, or the Thrawn trilogy, right? Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, Last Command. I've read all three of those a few times. I actually really like that series. I highly recommend that one. I read um, the Revenge of the Sith novelization because I liked the movie so much. Mm -hmm that I bought the novelization and I read it when it came out. How cool was that fight uh, between uh, Anakin and uh, Dooku in the book? I don't remember the details, but I know that it was, it was a like little freaking hucking tables at him and stuff. Yeah. And in the original script, apparently Dooku tells him right there that he was the one who facilitated the whole thing with his mother dying and the sand people. Really? Yeah. Did you know that? No. Yeah. So he tell him, tells tells him that, and then that leads to Anakin beheading him. I um, I also read Darth Bane, the first one, and I've read about half of Plagueis. I haven't finished Plagueis. I have about half of it uh, done. Cool. And that's it. Those are the only novels I've ever read. Just realized you guys were streaming. What did I miss? Also, love your guys' work. It's always awesome to see your stuff. You got me into Legends too. Thanks, Nathan. Glad you could join the stream. Eric is a new member. Thank you, man. Greetings from the dark side. Greetings, Darth Revan. What's going on? Well, boys and ghouls. Goblins and ghouls. Do you believe Anakin's vision of Padme dying was entirely manufactured by Palpatine? Did Palpatine know to wait until Anakin knew she was pregnant? I think Palpatine knew everything, man. I think he facilitated everything pretty much. Like... Uh, in episode two, he put them together. I mean, then he wanted Anakin on the council. Like he literally facilitated everything, and he knew what was going on. So it was yeah. it was his idea to. I'm gonna be watching your career with great interest. Well, don't you remember how in episode two he sends Anakin to Naboo to watch over Padme? Right, right. It's like ah, you should get to, uh, may I might I suggest Master Kenobi because he knew Anakin would roll with him. Right. <clears throat> so. May I suggest they put him into the into the protection of your graces? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Dude. It's like. Under the protection under the protection of your graces. Yeah. It's like he's just such God, a mastermind. What a great. I'll say it here, and I've gotten a lot of a lot of crap for this for saying this out loud, but I stand by this opinion. I think Ian McDermott should have been nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for Revenge of the Sith. Absolutely. And I think it was. What do you get flack for that? I get I get so much flack for that, but I think he was robbed that year of not getting a best supporting actor nomination. I thought he did such an incredible job as the emperor. Who gives you? Like some of it is a little bit kabuki theater, sure. but like it's so fucking good. Let's see who got nominated who, that year. Who, who gives you flack? Tell me, Mark. Tell me. <laughs> What are the names? Everybody. The community um, will destroy them. All right, so 1999, right? That's the year, right? 1999, best supporting, best supporting um, actor Oscar. Um, so it would be 1983. No, no, it's 1999. For what episode one? No, no, no. I'm talking about Revenge of the Sith. Very specifically, I think he should have been nominated. For Revenge of the Sith. Oh, Revenge of the Sith. Oh, I'm sorry, not 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 99. You're right, you're right. 2005. My bad, my bad. 2005. Um, yeah, yeah. 99 is uh, Phantom Menace. My bad. Uh, supporting actor Oscar. Hey, theory. East Coast Canada here, Toronto. Really hope to get to interview Dave Filone. Oh, I wish. You are the best person to interview him. Cheers. Thanks, Kale. Yeah, it'd be cool. So I did an interview with ET Canada. <laughs> just want to say Kathleen Kennedy needs to be fired and she is awful at her job. Just put Dave Filoni in charge. Yeah, I'm not too impressed with her words and her overall uh, direction with Star Wars, that's for sure. I'm not too impressed with putting it shortly. All right, so Million Dollar Baby, Morgan Freeman won. And, and he did a great job, but Morgan Freeman already won for glory, right? Uh, 
or, or for something. Uh, Morgan Freeman, okay, Million Dollar Baby, it's good. Never it's seen fine. it. It's fine. Alan Alda in The Aviator as Owen Brewster was not that good. Never seen it. He played, yeah, yeah, Alan Alda, The Aviator's a great movie. Oh, I've seen, no, no, I've, I've seen that. It, I've seen The Aviator with, with, with Leo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alan Alda's role isn't great. Right. Um, Thomas Hayden Church in Sideways. I, I, yeah, okay. I, I mean, I barely fucking can remember that movie. Jamie Foxx in Collateral. That one, that one, I think is actually really good. Collateral. Is that where his is son was dying? Movie. No, Collateral is the movie where he plays a cab driver, and he. Oh, wait, that uh, wasn't Jamie Foxx. That was with. Uh, with uh, with Tom Cruise, directed by Michael Mann, where Tom Cruise is a hitman and he's driving him all around L.A. doing hits. Dude, if you haven't seen that movie, like, stop the stream and go watch it right What's now. What's it called? And then Collateral. Collateral. It's an incredible movie. Oh, is that? Is that? And, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he's like balding and, and stuff. It, it, right, right. No, no, no. Who? Tom Cruise? No, not Tom Cruise. Uh, Jamie. No, Jamie's playing Jamie. He's just a cab driver. I remember he, they, he played a character where he was like all like he had like the 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 comb over with like two strands of hair and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not collateral. That's not, no. And then Clive Owen nominated for Closer. I don't even remember that movie. Ian McDermott should have been nominated. That's all That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's true. No love. No love for the prequels. Only now do they realize. Only now when it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If Hayden Christian returned as Anakin in the Obi One TV series, what moments would you want to see happen? Thanks for answering, guys. Oh, I went over this in a video on its own um, a few days ago. I would want to see a lot of flashback scenes in the Clone Wars, but I definitely want to see a lot of Anakin coming to terms with becoming Vader. So when he takes the mask off, you know, how is he dealing with it? What's going on? I want to see a lot of the the stuff that we read in the books with, with how Anakin deals with the suit and the uncomfort that is now his life. Um, tons of stuff. Tons of stuff. Do I have to be on my computer to become a join member? I think so. All right, if I'm looking Nathan. at the wrong Oscars, like whoever's in the Oscar chat with me here, like if you guys are still on that train, put up the nominees of who the right people would have been he's competing against because maybe I, I got it wrong. Get Ryan Johnson on the show. Yeah, well, I don't think he's gonna do it. I don't think he's gonna do it. Yeah, why would he? Uh, light, light a who bags wig on fire boys. What? Trump twenty twenty. What? Light. What somebody? Light a who bags wig on. Yeah, don't keep saying it. It's probably like a chant. It's probably like a spell. For you to say out loud. Yeah, just like. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks for the two bucks. Michael Alcott is a new member. Thank you, Joey. Hey, Theory, thanks for the content you put out. Star Wars and your videos help me cope with my anxiety. Thanks again. Love you guys. Thanks, Joey. Uh, have you guys read Truce at Bakura? No. Currently reading it for the first time. Wanted something that takes place directly after Return of the Jedi. Hmm. Huh. No. Supposedly, there's some some Disney uh, uh, canon books. That's what I call it. The D I call it the DCEU, mm -hmm. the Disney Canon Extended Universe. <laughs> but uh, I don't know why I cracked myself up with that one. I thought that was a good one. Um, but in the DCEU, um, there's a book called um, I forget what it's called, Lineage or or Blood Bloodlines Bloodlines, mm -hmm. um, which takes place supposedly right after Return of the Jedi. And it shows Leia trying to rebuild the Republic and stuff like that. Um, and some people that you know that I know actually say it's a good book. I've never read it, but uh, there's a book called Bloodlines. That's a prequel to Force Awakens. That talks a lot about the early days past Return of the Jedi, according to the DCEU, the Disney Canon Extended Universe, which is not part of the actual Star Wars canon. Um, but it's its own thing um, with a planet called Bok 2 or whatever that you can visit at Galaxy's Edge that nobody's ever heard yeah. of. Yeah, Bok 2. Anakin Skywalker was a simp. I am Darth Pimp. Very well. <laughs> Very well. Should Kenobi That's series include kind of flashbacks 
of Obi-Wan and Anakin as Jedi Knights from the Clone Wars. Yeah, I think it would be cool. That would be yeah, cool, man. man. That would be yeah. cool. I'll, I'll, I'm with that. I'm with that. De-age their face a little bit. Easy. Done. Any good Star Wars trailer memes? Memories or memes? I saw Revenge of the Sith cheeser before Incredibles and left the theater mid-movie with my mom to go watch it again in a different theater. Oh, that's cool, man. That's dedication. Love the... Love from Arizona, would you... Love from Arizona, would would to see you to collab on a video game both your passions for star wars and mark's industry experience it'll be awesome rule of two strong yeah all right so so somebody i think has the correct nominees stuff of legends i'm going to believe you he lost against george clooney syriana matt dave matt dylan and crash paul giamatti cinderella man uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Brokeback Mountain, William Hurt, A History of Violence. Again, you know, he should have been there, dude. He should have been there. Yeah, that's weird. You, you know, he's too much sure. He's a Sith Lord. Yeah, I don't know why <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> You're not a match for him. He's a Sith Lord. The only movie there that I saw was uh, Brokeback Mountain. It's yeah, the only one. It's a cool movie. They did well. Ang Lee. Ang Lee directed that. Yeah, they acted really well. Any good Star Wars? Or no, we got that. Love from Arizona. Okay, I think uh, I think we're done, boys. We're done, boys and girls. Uh, Black Spire is mentioned in Solo also. I'm a student filmmaker, and my goal is to one day direct a Star Wars film. Good luck, Ch man. Take a number. Join the club. <laughs> You're going to have to get through Chad Stileski first. Yeah. Good luck, dude. Hey, you might do it. That'd be funny. Uh, the Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker, Fernandez, which do you dislike less? Um, Fernandez, what are we in? The, the Boy Scouts? What are we uh, playing yeah. Playing ball over here? <laughs> yeah. So look, I... Um, Fernandez, get to third base right now. I I dislike I dislike The Last Jedi less than Rise of Skywalker. I thought Rise of Skywalker was an abomination. I thought Last Jedi was an abomination too, but I think La La Last Jedi was painfully. It's I think it's a better movie. Here's the only That's reason I opinion. liked The Rise of Skywalker is because it changed everything that was The Last Jedi, which I disliked so immensely. That's the only reason. Otherwise, as a right. movie itself, no. We should have got a Mara Jade movie. Um, yeah. If you want to get deep into Mara Jade, read the Thrawn trilogy. She's a big, big part of that, of that book. Godspeed, Rebels. I rebel. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what I choose to. Whatever of you classic movies, yeah, I'd love to. What on Fantasy Theory? Ryan Johnson should be on the show. Great guy. First of all, I know Ryan pretty well. He is a great guy. I'll say that right now. Ryan Johnson is a really cool dude. Um, I've had great conversations with him. Go check out the documentary I built with him. I think it, it has some really great insights into the filmmaking process. He talks a little bit about Star Wars, not too much, but we do talk about it a little bit. But um, Ryan Johnson's a good dude. He just he had an impossible, thankless task, which is... Here's Star Wars, and we're not going to give you any rules. Go have fun. So if, if, like, if Christopher Nolan did a Star Wars movie, it would be similar to what Ryan did. Some, like, off-the-beaten-path thing that has nothing to do with I the core I don't think values. anyone could butcher that thing as, like, Ryan did. Oh, dude, I'm sure, I'm sure there's plenty of people that could butcher it worse. I mean, think about it. You know how easy it is to butcher something? No. No, the, like the the only like, thing they could do is like turning Luke into like the tooth fairy or something. That could that would be like that'd be maybe worse. But there's nothing more they could do. <laughs> you saw, <laughs> turning Luke into the Just tooth fairy. Imagine, remember, you saw Shrek too, right? Like the 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 fairy godmother or whatever. Yeah, turn Luke into that. That could make it worse. Um, I just posted the link to the doc if you guys want to check it out. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I um, look, I'm I'm a very outspoken anti Last Jedi guy, but knowing how difficult it is to make a movie, there's a million people that could have made it a lot worse. Um, but there's also people that could have made it better. You know, there's also people that could have made it better. There's no doubt about that. I could have made it better. I guarantee you that if I, if I made that with my limited knowledge compared to Ryan Johnson in filmmaking, I bet you I could have made it better. You know, look, I don't. I think you would have made it more honest. Yeah. To what the to what the brand values yeah. are, and that's always been my critique. With I it. mean, all I would have to do is tell where the story would go, and then I'd have those like multi million dollar professionals working with me, and the cinematographers, and all that, and they'd be like, "All right, we're gonna shoot it like this and like that," and I'll be like, "Yeah, sounds good. Do it. As long as it's like this and like that. That's it. Done. Easy." Josh, Mad Mickelson couldn't be thrown because he's already. Um, part of the DCEU. He is? Yeah, Matt Mickelson is, um, he's, uh, um, you know, Stardust's father. He's um, he's the dad. He's the uh, scientist that designed the Death Star. Oh, yeah. I thought you said DCEU. And I'm like, where in the DCEU is he? <laughs> It's the Disney Canon Extended Universe. <laughs> oh, that's what you call it? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. God, it's a terrible yeah. joke, but whatever. Dude. I got paid. It sucks about John Boyega. I loved Finn as the Jar Jar of the sequels. Uh, wish he was force sensitive. He wasn't the Jar Jar. He wasn't the Jar Jar. Who? Uh, Finn. No. no, I think the Jar Jar of of the sequels was was like, BB-8 probably. No, because BB-8 was adorable. Uh, I actually like BB-8 a Jar lot. Jar Jar was um, adorable. Right, but like the the one character that everybody's like, oh, that's fucking you know a little bit off the beaten path. Um, the Jar Jar is probably. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Who's like that one lightning rod character? I don't want to compare. Eh, I don't know. Maybe Hux. <laughs> oh, God. Look at this question. You see that? From Kyle Hardy. Uh... Oh, God. Hey, I'm not reading that. <laughs> I'm not reading that. Uh... What's going on, chat? You guys are in a mood today, yeah, well... man. Everything okay? <laughs> What's you know on, what's dude? incredible about Star Wars? <laughs> it's the only major franchise that's made as a film. Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter are all books originally. Well, yeah. the script was a book, yeah. I guess you could say, theoretically. No, 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 but he's right. He's right. You know, and, and it is special because of that. I'd say that the other ones, there's, there's two other ones that I think are really powerful as well. Um, one of them is Indiana Jones. You know, that's also just a movie that spawned a, yeah. a bunch of novels and a bunch of cool stuff. Back to the Future maybe didn't spawn as much stuff, but it's another great one. And The Matrix, you know, like yeah. um, those are all Holy movies that's, yeah. that spawned huge other things. You, you know, know what? I think I feel like as a 90s kid, I was born in the coolest time because I was I witnessed the prequels and I witnessed The Matrix. Remember, like when the Matrix yeah. came out, that was like the most mind blowing thing ever. I was a kid, right. but I just remember all the adults. That came out in '99. Yeah, I remember all that the adults and teenagers around me were just like, <sighs> and I was just like trying to understand it, but I was just like, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah. How would you feel if Episode 10, 11, 12 was about Anakin somehow returning, like it's decades down the line? Uh. I just feel like they got to put it to rest now. Yeah, it's yeah. over. They got to they got to rebuild and look, we're going to get Mandalorian season 2, that's going to be good. We're going to get the Bad Batch, that's going to be fun. Eventually we'll get Obi-Wan. Um we're not going to get uh Cassian Andor. We're, we're going to get your Cassian Andor show, man. I was just going <laughs> to say. We're probably not going to get the Ryan Johnson trilogy. Um we we know we're not getting the Benioff and Weiss trilogy. That I mean that's already for sure. 
You know? Um, yeah. yeah. He never said anything when you were talking to him about the trilogy? How about maybe. Oh, you can't say? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you should make a video that defends the prequels theory. I sent The Last Jedi 1 to my dad who liked it and he changed his mind. <laughs> oh! That's cool. Uh, yeah, I know my video about uh, Hayden Christensen playing as Anakin Skywalker doing a really good job really changed a lot of people's minds and really eased up the hate on him. And they're like, oh, okay, I kind of see it now. So, um, yeah, I'd love to make a video about the prequels. I think it'd be cool. It'd be pretty sweet. Anyways, we're at 60 minutes now. We've been doing the, the podcast, the show, for an hour. Stay tuned for next week because we're going to have a very special guest, Crossing Fingers. And uh, I'm very excited to get that on, on, on yeah. board for you guys. And hopefully, look, we love you, chat. Hopefully you got you got it out of your system today so that next week we can have a really good conversation with a really good guest because um, he loves um, he loves Star Wars. I'll give yeah. you some hints. He's, he's heavily well, involved. If chat wants in to Star keep Wars. being funny, like they always do, I don't really mind. But maybe when we have special guests, I might turn it on to just members only chat. And then whenever we have special guests, I'll just donate all of the super chats to a foundation of the guest's choice or something like that. I think that would be that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's up to you guys. If you want to be weirdos, then members only chat. And if not, then you're free. You're all free. Have you two only met in person once? No, we met a few times in person. Yeah, I think like three times or something. Uh, Who, you and yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hey yeah. Mark, streaming SWG anytime soon? Um, so I haven't been gaming a ton, but when I have been gaming, I gotta be honest, it's been pretty much all Call of Duty. Um, we played a way out the other night, uh, Theory and I, which is a cool sort of multiplayer co-op game. But um, I'll go back to SWG when I can convince Theory to friggin' install it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, look, SWG is awesome. It's been there for my whole, pretty much my whole adult life. So it's like, I'll, I'll definitely go back to it at some point right? Uh, soon. But I've been playing so much Call of Duty uh, recently that whenever I have time to game, I usually pop in Call of Duty. Cool. Yeah. And I've been playing lots of Ghosts of Tsushima on the gaming channel. So you guys better How join. How is it? Oh, it's amazing. Awesome. It's huh? awesome. It's like... Uh, Ocarina of Time remastered with Samurai. That's cool, man. Yeah, I really, really enjoy it. It's really good. It's like um, it's like a sandbox type game, like uh, like Red Dead Redemption style, or um, yeah, it's open world, but there's like obviously like a storyline, and um, it's very true to Samurai. I think it takes place in 1274 when uh, Genghis Khan's I think it's his like grandson or something or great grandson or something like that. Um, the Mongols basically invade the island of Tsushima and cool. the samurai have to take a stand. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I um, I've been thinking about it, installing it. I know the guys on Collider Games love it. They did like, you know, they did a playthrough and all that stuff. Great. But like, it's just that whenever I have that window to game, I'm like, you know, get ready for the AO. You know, I'm like, I'm hopping in there. Yeah. Ashley, you're now a mod. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. But yeah, I mean, like, I like story games. I played so much of COD, and I, I feel like competition is just too crazy, and I really like to just dive into a story. I'm a, I'm a story guy, so. But there is something fun yeah. about just, you know, picking up and, and going, so, like COD. So it's. Yeah. It's yeah. Good. COD, COD is like going to the basketball court and playing basketball, and sometimes right. you just. There's kids that are just way too good at basketball and you don't get a shot yeah. in, you know? Yeah. But at other times you make five fucking, you know, five three pointers and you're feeling great. Mark, it's you like know? the fourth F bomb this stream, bro. Come on. We gotta keep it clean. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um It's the second F bomb. Maybe the third. I think it's the third or fourth, yeah. <laughs> it's the third. All right, well on that note. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, on that note, uh, I want you guys to guess who the uh, the special guest is going to be next week. And once it's double confirmed, I'm going to make a little like 20 second video, being like, "Hey guys, announcing the guest's name," 
and then I want you all to um, post your questions in the comments below. So I want to see like, I want to see a minimum of 10,000 comments. All right. We're not going to ask, yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to ask him or her all of those comments, but uh, all those questions, but definitely helps the algorithm. So, eh, eh, all right. All right. Well, love you guys. Thanks for chilling with us. And uh, we will see you in the next one, which will be an exciting episode. So until then, remember, rise, my friends. My boy.